the, the person can take this game and they can immerse themselves in the world or they can do things with it and they just and it's it's fun for them that's it's always what we're shooting for it's basically how to how to create fun for people and that's an elusive target <laughs> but it's something that we're always you know trying to do among games that have defined the real-time strategy genre command and conquer is seen as one of the most influential titles the cnc franchise along with warcraft and starcraft shaped the identity of RTS games during the 90s and would influence the designs of countless similar strategy titles in later years. They started it and every other strategy game you can practically think of evolves from there. Even though the franchise ended with a whimper instead of a bang, it managed to create an indelible impact on the history of video games. Join us as we take a look at the rise and fall of Command & Conquer. For fans who wanted to return to the traditional Command & Conquer universe, they would have to wait until 2007 with Command & Conquer 3 Tiberium Wars. You can't kill the Messiah. Tiberium Wars officially introduced the Skrin faction to the franchise. As with previous games in the series, each faction had their own unique takes on units, strategies, and base design. The Skrin faction could be unlocked after finishing the GDI and Nod campaigns and were also playable in multiplayer. Introducing the aliens also came with designing the faction to be different from the other two. The Skrin were immune to the effects of Tiberium and had their own unique superweapon. FMV cutscenes made a return to the series. Joseph Kukin reprised his role as Kane, along with new additions like Michael Ironside, Billy D. Williams and more. The big point about Command & Conquer 3 was it trying to take over the eSports crown from StarCraft. EA heavily promoted Command & Conquer 3 on the professional scene with the touted Battlecast system. Battlecast allowed players to set up matches, spectate in games, and allow commentators to provide commentary during play. Tiberium Wars was followed up with an expansion titled Kane's Wrath. Wrath would introduce a new game mode in the form of Global Conquest. Global Conquest allowed players to play on a turn-based map to try to take over the world and defeat the other players. This kind of system was previously featured in the Battle for Middle-Earth series, also developed by EA Los Angeles. Sub-factions similar to Red Alert 2 and Command and Conquer Generals also made an appearance, along with new units for the three main factions. Instead of having new campaigns for the factions, the expansion story focused on Kane and traced his actions from before Tiberian Sun to after Command and Conquer 3. Peace through power! No, no, touch nothing! We mustn't do anything to disrupt space-time continuum.